from where you sit in APS, how should we be designing learning experiences that are engaging and relevant? Um, from my lens, I want to look at it from where does the student latch on to it and where does where do they find the meaning? How does mm. it relate to them? Um, I'm, I've been toying around with this idea of how to embed more social-emotional learning into the learning process. Mm. Um, in conversations I've had with counselors, the, the part that comes back to us is we all can remember back to a time when we were in school where we felt something when we were learning something, whether it was a connection to the teacher or something about the content itself that still sticks with us to this day. Um, and so I am trying to figure out what does what could that look like um, as a counselor goes in to do work in a small group setting or an individual setting or a classroom setting with students. How do we get it so that they engage with it and it resonates with them beyond that one time that we might have with them? Um, as counselors, they have a finite amount of time that they can get into the You're classroom, right? Yeah. right? Um, the idea that content trumps and drives everything. Um, from my side is there's got to be a way of incorporating the social emotional learning component so that way it will continue to resonate within them and engage them. So theoretically students are coming to the classroom because they've enjoyed being in your class, they've right. connected with you, and so now we're, we're, we're attacking the attendance rates, uh, we're attacking the behaviors, and we're attacking the credits. Um, we always, counselors work from ABCs, attendance, behaviors, credits. Hmm. Um, credits, you can also, you know, course completion. Sure, stuff sure, like that. sure. So this is something I am really trying to figure out in my own mind right now. Well, I like the, the, the way you've sort of framed it as um, something that we have all experienced, right? Mm -hmm. You're sort of rooting it in. We know that there are these sense memories um, that, are, that are deep within us, whether we were sort of learning something mm -hmm. that someone else wanted us to know right. or learning something that, that really just um, felt, uh, you know, that had, it, had that deep moment of, I am learning something, and I'm being challenged emotionally mm -hmm. or, um, you know, sort of within myself, what do you feel like is the best marriage of those things? Where you have this, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're not saying, and no, we don't want content, right? You're, you're saying, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> right? You're, you're, yeah, you're no. saying you want the content to be there, but um, how do you marry or what's a good marriage of the content and that emotional feeling or the, the mm -hmm. deep understanding that comes from having something resonate? Mm -hmm. So I participate in the class that our district is offering, the academic behavioral, academic and behavior through content course. Mm. And so the, the premise behind the course is infusing our curriculum and our engage, engagement with students Social emotional learning is embedded in that. And so this is a group of, I think when we were all put together, probably about 40 of us all together. Okay. Um, and this is the second and kind of second and third part of the class. Last semester was all about the, the theory behind the practice. This okay. is about putting it into practice. Yep. So, you know, the idea of how, you know, make an instructional approach for social emotional learning. I mean, in, in a sense, with, you know, without having other words to attach to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, whether that come from support from the counseling department, um, whether it come from support from the AWARE team, um, or the instructors for the ABC class, you know, how can we sit down and help teachers think about if this is the content of what I need to get across in my lesson, what are some things to help them think through and say, this is why this resounded with me. And granted, my experience isn't going to relate to every one of my right, students, clearly. but maybe some of them. And then maybe I can think of a different means of engaging or emotionally pulling them in and just continuing to work that. Um, hmm. Having come from a school that did um, quite a bit of work around equity and engagement, um, some of the 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 late start Wednesday PD time was 
revolved around that work. So it's there's a vehicle to help infuse the curriculum already, yeah. at least in some of the schools. Right, right. Um, I'm learning, you know, what what are the practices in all of the buildings, having shifted to this position. Um, so I'm starting to see kind of what that looks like and how how do we talk about a coaching model for that. Um, because I've, I've actually done some research and I can't find anything that shows counselors as kind of instructional coaches mm -hmm. for the social emotional learning. But, or you could be a pioneer. Yeah, and that's that's kind of, it's like, huh, maybe I do go back to grad school and work on my doctorate. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a, an area with uh, a lot of a lot of value, especially as we look at, you know, relationships being sort of the core uh, of, of any successful uh, educational career. Mm -hmm. And how is it that you can um, sort of make that engagement and that relevancy about the relationship between whether it's the counselor or the teacher mm -hmm. or the peers. Um, how do you see relationships being uh, something that, that teachers are focusing on in, in APS? I think they I think they do it as quickly and as, as well as they can given the time constraints that they're under. Hmm. Um, so you're know, saying relationships take time? They absolutely do. <laughs> yes, yes, that is what I'm saying, actually. Um, I think that um, giving them room to allow those things to happen naturally for, versus a force, today we're going to do an activity on getting to know you and getting yep. to know me, right? Yep. We've all seen that, and we all think, oh, well, that's really kind of cheesy. <laughs> um, but there are things, given appropriate time, can become natural. Um, I think some of the challenges around that are how do you do that, um, my background's high school, yep. so how do you do that in a situation where you have a class of 35 students or more? Um, clearly time is hugely valuable at that point. Um, I think another challenge that we have is getting, getting everyone to understand the research that supports having strong relationships with students in your classroom yeah. impacts their their behavior and the content and their learning and the content. So those are some of the the things that we need to work through. Um, ask me the question one more time because I got distracted. No, no, no. I, so the for me the if the core is relationships, mm -hmm. right, and and we're asking essentially teachers to. Mm -hmm create these kinds of relationships, how, how either are they or how can they really work with students to, to better um, support that relationship creation? So another thought that, <clears throat> again, coming from the PWR team now, with this um, concept of individual career and academic plans, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how can it change or shift from a very counselor-centered approach and not every building has that now, um, but you know maybe some some of the things that are happening with an ICAP or with student working through ICAP yeah. shared with the instructors or their teachers, so that way it's not even about your content in your class now. Now it's about, hey, I really am interested in becoming an engineer. You're my English teacher. Um, that this is kind of what I'm thinking and allowing you to engage in a conversation around that. Technical um, writing, looking at all of the different ways in which absolutely. your content area can support my plan. Yeah. Before I left Rangeview, we did um, a lesson that was just, it was a, you know, a plan. You know, what's your post-secondary plan? And so we had them write to a, a prompt. Yeah, we did a PWR goal in Naviance. Um, that was kind of the catalyst for their thinking, but then we had them write something using Google Docs and then ask them to share it with at least one of their teachers. Mm -hmm. Didn't care who. Mm -hmm. um, with the idea then that the teachers get that and engage in a conversation, not even about the technical writing and right. the engineering, um, but just you as a human being. You care about me enough that I shared this with you and then you're engaging in a conversation with me about yeah. it. I mean, I mean, there's a really big difference <laughs> between um, sort of forced sharing and sort of being transparent and open um, with someone else, right? You, mm -hmm. you, and the fact that you didn't say, and share it with me, because I'm going to go in and, yeah. you know, like that, that was not the call. The call was be transparent with some other person, right? right? 
share it. And and one thing, sort of my, from my own experience, um, when my uh, both my older children now will you know start assignments or things like that on Google Docs, and they'll share with me. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the day, I will get that you know notification. Cool. And sometimes they're even still in the document. Mm -hmm. And I can sort of surprise them and make a comment back to them and say, you know, this is really good. Have you thought about this? And mm -hmm. I know that those moments transfer because they talk about them at mm -hmm. home because they do, you know, care about those things. And so when you're asking of, of kids to, to share and, to, uh, and you're sort of setting up the teachers that, hey, these are coming. You should. We did. This is an opportunity for a relationship. This is yeah. an opportunity to to sort of deepen what you already yeah. have started. Yeah, and it provided relevancy to the students in terms of someone's going to talk to me about this, right. and it's about myself and why I think maybe something I did in school really did have merit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, and it allowed that conversation. So I was really. I left Rangie before I had a chance to hear were there conversations that really were yeah. going on. So um, that's a follow-up I need to do. Yeah, but I think that all of those pieces of, like, have you set up the structures to do it? Have you mm -hmm. allowed the time and the space right. um, for these relationships to take hold, for the social-emotional to be incorporated, mm -hmm. and for planning to take part with teachers or with counselors mm -hmm. and things like that? So I feel like you've tackled this question pretty darn well. Okay. Um, I do want to ask you one last thing. Sure. Which is, what is the question that you think we should be asking? As a, either as a system or that something that you continue to grapple with, what's a uh, question that sort of uh, either keeps you up at night or however you want to frame that, uh, that, that you, you really think we should be asking and answering? Ooh, that's a big one. Um, how, how do we get our families to interact with say that. Right now, a challenge that we all talk about is our kids come, but then our families are, are not part of that always. Especially at the They're not always level. a part of the conversation. Right. Especially at the secondary level. Um, I think elementary school is really great about having certain structures in place for that, but how do we pull our parents into the conversation so that they see what's happening for their students um, and how we work collaboratively as a team? I love that. The way in which, especially at the secondary level, that they continue to be that, you know, sort of third part of the it's school, like, right? Still like, mom and dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You might give them up for eight hours, but <laughs> the rest of the time they're yours, you yeah. know. So, so they're yours, but how are you also working with us to yeah. support what you want from your ch for your child? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, the, and I think if we were really considering um, all of the different ways that parents can take part, right? I think that, you know, we all have ideas around, well, they can come to the event that we're holding at, at school, or they can come to a meeting that mm -hmm. we've set up at, mm -hmm. aside for this conversation, um, but what are all the other ways that yeah. they can take part? Um, I think that would be definitely one to ask and answer. Yeah. Really appreciate your time. Well, Thank you so much. Absolutely.